and welcome to JFK International Airport. Before we start today's program, there are a couple of folks we'd like to acknowledge in the audience. The Commissioner of the New York State Department of Labor, Robert Reardon. The <laughs> Port Authority of New York and New Jersey, Jeffrey Linford. Commissioner from Licia Eve. The Queens District Attorney, Melinda Katz. State Senator Leroy Comrie. State Senator James Sanders Jr. State Senator Jessica Ramos. Assemblymember Alicia Heinemann. For Amato, Assemblymember Leo Anderson. Assemblymember Mikhail Assemblymember Claude Finnell. Assemblymember Jennifer Rajkumar. Assemblymember David Weprin. Councilmember Selvina Brooks Powers. And Councilmember Natasha Williams. And please join me in welcoming the CEO of New Terminal One, Dr. Gerard Bushell, the president of the Building and Construction Trades, Gary LaBarbera, the principal of JLC Infrastructure, Magic Johnson, the chairman of Ferrovial, Rafael DePino, Earl President Donovan Richards, Congressmember Gregory Meeks, the Executive Director of the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey, Rick Cotton. And please join me in welcoming the 57th Governor of the Great State of New York, Governor Kathy Hochul. Essential, spectacular New York day. Are we feeling the love? This is spectacular. Uh, I am so delighted to be here to launch an endeavor that many thought had been given up for dead, except today it's all about new life. And I'm so excited to be here with extraordinary leaders who would not give up on the boldness of a project like this. I want to thank Rick Cotton. I'll be introducing him in a minute, but he is the genius and the person behind so many of the transformative projects that are legacy making that years from now he will say, how did people come out of the pandemic? And we'll say, we built. We built with leaders like Rick Cotton. I want to thank him for what he does. <laughs> Congressman Gregory Meeks, who in his responsibility of uh, Foreign Relations Committee travels the world. I have a feeling you've spent more time in this airport than just about anybody. So, so this is all about you, Greg. This might make sure you have a good experience as you travel the world on behalf of our country. Congressman Greg Meeks, a great friend, a champion for things. Donovan Richards, who makes references to the fact that I always come here with lots and lots of money for his borough. Don't tell all the other boroughs, okay? Just keep that between us. <laughs> Uh, uh, always proud to work with you, a great champion. Gerald Bruchelle, Executive Director of New Terminal One Group, congratulations. This is extraordinary. Let's get this done. <laughs> Rafael Del Pino, another leader. We've seen him in many other projects, the chairman of Ferrovio, and I want to thank him for his work with uh, Terminal One as well. Also, I mentioned building things. Nothing gets built of consequence in this entire state without Gary LaBarbera and his incredible men and women of labor, making sure the shovels are in the ground and we do spectacular projects. To the entire board of leadership at the Port Authority, it's been a long journey as well. And I thank all of you for your commitment. And also, there's someone who's just kind of just fun to have here. Adds a little bit of star power. I know this is New York City. It's hard to find somebody who's gonna impress everybody. We're in New York, like everybody comes here. But when we say, we're going to have Magic Johnson here as well. I mean, how about the star power of that? Uh, I might have kind of caught you off guard that he was going to be here today, but uh, uh, kind of a no-look pass over there. <laughs> I grew up with a bunch of brothers. It was all about basketball. It was all about magic. And, uh, although, and I shouldn't say this, and I won't. Well, maybe I will. Had a little playground basketball the other day with the mayor of New York. <laughs> you can look at social media and see how that one went. Okay. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just too diplomatic to say anything. But, uh, 
<laughs> no, I'm just gonna say this is, you know, in, in magic. This is a chance to celebrate what you've done with your with your star power. How you've harnessed that to transform lives and to invest in projects in parts of our cities where people had not gone before. And I thank you for that. And I only wish that others would follow your leadership. What a different country we'd live in if others used that power they have, the celebrity they have because of their incredible success as an athlete, and to do that to do good for other people. So I honor you for your lifetime of support uh, since you left the court and what you've done for our nation. So thank you, Magic Johnson. And I'll just say, Larry Bird never came to a place like this and built an airport. <laughs> Where's Larry? Larry? I don't see. We got a nice. I don't see Larry. I don't see Larry. So, uh, you know, I gotta stop. <laughs> uh, and I know everyone at JFK is tired of seeing me because I'm always here. Uh, uh, there is so much going on here, and I know every single person. I feel like I know them personally, especially my years as lieutenant governor when this was my commute. You know, I live, live in Buffalo, and this was my commute, go back and forth to this airport almost on a daily basis. And so, so I honor the people who work at this airport, uh, the people who showed up during a pandemic to make sure that people could be served. You know, the rest, never forget the restaurant workers, the maintenance workers, the baggage handlers, the airline workers. They showed up, and a lot of people were just zooming into life. And so we honor them every single day. And they literally kept this city and this state moving. So when I think about bold plans for our state and for our nation, I think about them as well. Because today is just proof that when people pull together, they can rise up in a powerful, powerful way. So this is a big day for New York, long time in coming. And there's been a lot of stops and starts with this project. Don't need to go through all the bad history. Some people here in the front row might have PTSD from that. So I, I won't bring back those images. But there were so many delays and moments when it just felt like it just wouldn't happen. And when the pandemic hit, you know, it, it, it halted air travel. I mean, what was the future of air travel two years ago? No one could have imagined what it would take to start saying, no, but we think it's going to be better. We're going to get through this. And that's what vision's all about. It seemed like an impossibility. But my administration likes to make the impossible possible. And that's what we've worked on it to achieve in the first year in office. And when I took office, there was a lot of uncertainty around this project. Rick and I sat in our office and we talked about it and I said, what are some of the big projects that have been held up because of the pandemic? What else is, has to happen? I said, give me something that is truly, truly bold and transformative because I want to send a message around the nation that this is New York. We may have been hardest hit by this pandemic, but we're going to rise up the furthest. And big projects put an, a stamp on that and say, yes, we can do anything. So we dream big. We dream big with this project. So this is the project that got the bill done. We're today, here today to officially announce plans to build, uh, move, move this further since uh, we were met in December when I first announced the plans to move this forward. But I said, let's make this a world-class hub. Many of us travel. This is New York, for God's sakes. We should always have the best in everything. It's not asking a lot, is it? This, this is New York. This is our brand. It's that swagger that we've always had we've got that back we've never lost that but we need a world-class hub to welcome people from around the world and let them know who we are this is our identity so today we're here to announce that we are finally after years of delay breaking ground on phase one of terminal one that's extraordinary we're serving a number of serving a number of international airlines and also this phase one. Of course, my first question is, how long is that going to take? And someone said, 2030. I said, I don't know. I'm the same age as Magic Johnson. I'm not sure I'm going to be alive by then. Okay. I got to let me check my watch here. How long is 2030? So, so we've got to get this done. And so we are going to have phase one completed by 2026. That's more reasonable. I can see 2026 down the road. And we'll have 14 new gates. So in 2026, it'll be spectacular. We'll all be done by 2020. I hope we're not all done. I hope the project's all done uh, by 2030. So in four years, travelers are going to see a whole new experience here. And when it's complete, it's going to be spectacular. It's going to be spectacular. Rick and I were just chatting that this could be among the greatest terminals in the world. I said, well, among, let's make sure we are the greatest. And we, this will be the largest freestanding terminal, not just here, but in the nation. 
You know, so we are dreaming big. Two, 2.4 million square feet with 23 gates. That is bold, that is ambitious. It's gonna be beautiful, naturally lit. Stay the, stay the art amenities. So even if you're flying economy, you're gonna have a first class experience. And this is a, best part for me, it's a $9.5 billion project. My favorite words, 100% privately funded. How about that? Gary, and Gary, this one's for you. 10,000 jobs, 6,000 in construction. It's going to be made by the most talented workforce known to man and womankind. And that includes 30% MWBE, because that is our commitment to lifting people up. 30% right here. You heard it. So let's get it done. I also want to thank. Congressman Meeks and Borough President Richards for leading the JFK Redevelopment Council. This is a powerful group that speaks for the people who sometimes feel that, you know, big projects come and go and they haven't been paid attention to, yet they're the ones who planted the flag here. They're the ones who live here. This is their home. And we have to respect them and to hear their needs. And you are the vehicles for that. And I thank you for your leadership in that role as well. So thank you. And everyone knows I share a belief with all of you that we need to keep focusing on our airports, especially JFK here. It already serves more international airports than any airport in the country. That's already our name. But we're going to even do more. And I'm going to continue talking about what we're doing elsewhere on, this, on these grounds. $18 billion plan, $18 billion to transform JFK into what it includes, almost $4 billion for our Terminal 6, $1.5 billion Terminal 4, $425 million for expansion of number Terminal 8, and that's on top of what we're doing at LaGuardia. If you've been to LaGuardia lately, maybe if you're JFK fans, you don't go there. But it's, it's extraordinary. It is amazing. People walk through there and their jaw drops. I mean, people want to look up again. It's kind of when I'm at Penn Station. Sorry to smack on Penn Station again. I was just there. But we're doing it better. Because right now, you go through a place like Penn Station and the former LaGuardia and the former airports, you just wanted to look down. You shuffled along, you know, just kind of in the masses. You didn't have any reason to feel optimistic, put a smile on your face. Now when you come through our airports, you see beautiful artwork that lifts the spirit, lifts the soul. You see the light coming in from the heavens. It is a transformative, positive, very human experience that has been long denied because people before us didn't have the vision that we have today. That's what excites me so, for, so much. And that is why we think about this project and rebuilding JFK overall. This is what this city and this state deserve. So mark my words. This project will be worthy of the name, not just New York, but also the name of President John F. Kennedy. To paraphrase him, he once said, let us not despair, but act. Let us accept our responsibility for the future. And after a pandemic filled with too much despair, far too much despair, here in New York, we are acting. And we're accepting the responsibility for our future by literally building a brighter one with projects like this for our state. So I thank all of you. I thank you for your participation. We are open for business. This is New York. And because this is people's first impression, I know their first impression is going to be, wow, wow, this is extraordinary. So I want to thank everyone. Welcome the leader who's making this happen. That is our own Rick Cotton. Thank you very much, Rick. Good morning. Uh, to say that it's a pleasure to be here understates what I'm feeling at the moment. This has been a long, long journey interrupted by a pandemic. But I want to begin by saying thank you to Governor Hochul. Uh, thank you for the support of the port's overall infrastructure agenda. But relevant to today, as you mentioned, Governor, this project was literally the first topic that you and I discussed when you became governor. Uh, and we talked about the magnitude of its aspiration and the fact that the pandemic had dealt it a very severe blow. And you threw your full support behind it. Without that support, we would not be here today. So thank you. And thank you. And thank you to Catherine Garcia, the Director of State Operations, who has followed up and been a support 
by us and with us uh, throughout our resuscitation of the project. Every one of JFK's passenger terminals is a public-private partnership. And the new Terminal 1 project represents the biggest the, and the boldest such partnership in the history of Port Authority airports, involving the commitment of $9.5 billion of private investment, all brought to the table by private investors with faith in New York, faith in the region, faith in JFK, and dare I say faith in the Port Authority. I would like also to say thank you to the Board of Commissioners. Uh, Gary LaBarbera is here, Vice Chair uh, Linford is here, Commissioner Eve, uh, Lisha Eve is here. Uh, without the support of the Board, we could not be doing uh, what we are. But I would like to, th this is really a moment to say thank you because this project was a very, very challenging project. And we did it twice. Why do it once when you can do it twice? But I want to thank the sponsors. It is really a unique, unique sponsorship group. Thank you to Ferrovial, the major international construction and infrastructure company who became our new lead investor this past spring. I want to say thank you to Luke Bugeja, CEO of the Airports Division. And we are honored to have with us, and you'll hear from him shortly, the chair of Ferrovial's corporate board, Rafael Del Pino, as well as Ferrovial's corporate CEO, Ignacio Madrid-Deos. Thank you to our 30% investor, JLC Infrastructure, and its founders, Magic Johnson and Jim Reynolds. Their participation fulfills our commitment to a 30% ownership stake by a minority-owned firm. But much more importantly, their active and influential participation in the negotiations and deal-making turned into a key partnership. Without Jim's leadership, and this project also would not have gone forward. Thank you to Ulico, the insurance company, the insurance company investor that has brought pension fund from organized labor to this deal. And thank you in particular to Ulico President Ed Smith. And I do want to say a particular thank you. Uh, Governor has mentioned it, a particular thank you to stress the importance of the JFK advisory Council, consisting of elected representatives and community leaders, many of whom are here today. With a big thank you to the Council's co-chairs, Congressman Greg Meeks and Queensboro President Donovan Richards. They have brought real leadership and real support to the project itself. Again, without their support, we would not be here today, and they have brought it with major attention to the community's priorities, and I thank you for your leadership. I also want to thank the executive leadership of the NTO group, led by CEO Gerard Bushell, who you will hear from shortly, as well as project executive Rich Smith. Smythe. Thank you to the U.S. Department of Transportation, the Federal Aviation Administration, and the City of New York for working with us at key points to move this project forward when it could easily have faltered. And thank you to Senator Chuck Schumer for his key support at the federal level. And I also want to recognize, I have to recognize, the remarkable efforts over more than five years, and that's actually understating the period of time that we've been working on this, of the Port Authority staff. The leaders of our negotiating team, Chief Development Officer Derek Utter and our Chief Operating Officer Huntley Lawrence, for their remarkable leadership. And extraordinary efforts by CFO Libby McCarthy, Chief of Financial Planning Anna Carvajalino, General Counsel Michael Farbiarge, Deputy General Counsel Amy Fisher, Director of Airport Redevelopment Jim Heitman, and key executives Lillian Valenti, Jim Sturace, Charles Everett, Terry Rizzuto, Susan Warner Dooley, Jessica Forsch, Hirsch Perek, Carol Bennett, and Suzette Bather Taylor, and many others uh, who I don't have time for. But this was a team effort. And what a day today is, what a long road it was to get here. These deals were done, were done twice, given the destructive intervention of the pandemic, but we are finally here. We're here to celebrate the construction start of the biggest single airport terminal project in the history of this legendary airport. Our goal for the new Terminal 1 is to build a top 10 terminal. We may try to up that goal, uh, having heard the, heard the governor, but we want to see this terminal be 
truly the best in the world. Airports are indeed gateways, and the Port Authority airports will now be gateways that the region deserves. They will encourage and attract visitors, not repel them. They will have the best technology and functionality, check-in, wayfinding, security. They will be airy and bright, natural light with floor-to-ceiling windows, inspiring and appealing public art, iconic processions, many local, that will satisfy every taste, and an overall design emphasis on a local New York sense of place, in the case of JFK. When you arrive at JFK, when you arrive at Terminal 1, you will know you are in New York. Today's groundbreaking symbolizes and embodies that forward movement as we add actual construction here at Terminal 1 to the construction already underway at JFK on Terminal 8 and Terminal 4. At JFK and across our region, the Port Authority is committed to transforming our airports into world-class gateways. When it comes to transforming airports, the Port Authority is proudly setting the gold standard for the nation. Thanks again to all who have made this day possible. Now I would like to invite up to the podium uh, the chairman of the House Foreign Relations Committee, the congressman for the district that encompasses JFK, a co-chair of our community advisory panel, a true friend, and a supporter who intervened multiple times to make this day possible, Congressman Gregory Lewis. Good morning, everybody. I mean, it is a good morning. And I am so delighted to be here because what we see happening here today is a dream that's turning into reality. That's what's happening. And this would have not occurred, so I need to thank people also, without a team working collectively together to get things done. First, you know, I'm a firm believer. When you put public-private partnerships together, that is how we get things done. And we build things in New York. And this is the gateway to the greatest country and the greatest city and state that this planet has ever seen. So Governor Hochul, Thank you. Thank you for coming in, staying focused, and making sure that this project became a reality. Rick, I can't thank you enough. We sat down from the very beginning, and we talked about making sure how the community was included. We wanted to make sure that we did something that has not happened in the United States of America before. So when we talk about creating wealth, and one of the things that we have a huge wealth gap in our country, we said that when we talked about 30%, it was 30% all the way around, including an equity ownership at Terminal 1. And so for the first time, you can go to any airport in the United States of America, for the first time, we have a 30% equity with JBL, Magic Johnson and Jim Reynolds. Huge first time that has ever happened. So thank you, Magic. And thank Jim for all that he's done to make sure that this deal happened. Because if it wasn't for you, and that's what's important, people need to know. So it's not just giving away 30%. It's giving it to someone who knew how to take the ball and put it in the hoop and make it happen. Because if it wasn't for you, this deal might not have come through. I've got to thank two people real quick. I want to first thank now the DA, but then former borough president, Melinda Katz, who was my co-chair when we started this program. <laughs> Working collecting together to make this happen. And my partner and friend who was in the city council and then the Borough of Queens had the infinite wisdom to elect him to be the borough president of our great county. 
my partner, Donovan Richards. Thank you. And look, public, private, if you want to do business and create jobs, you have to have the private sector. But if you want to put people to work, you have to have organized labor. Because you put those two together. Gary LaBarba, working together, putting it together with the private sector, creating jobs and putting people to work, that's what this is all about. Gerard Bichelle, CEO, again, showing the great diversity. You know, Queens County, and I, it's been mentioned, I'm the chair of the House Foreign Affairs Committee. One of the things that we lead in is diversity. We are the most diverse borough of any county in these United States of America. And this project just shows who we are and what we can do. For all of all, thank you. You came in recently, put up resources, said you wanted to be a team player, understood the structure of which we had began, and said, look, I'm coming in, and I want to be a part of that structure to make sure that we can deal and deliver to the community and to this state. Thank you for being that partner coming in. We appreciate you. And I also got to thank all of my colleagues in government. All of my colleagues in government. I just, just stand up for a second. All of my colleagues, because we are a team. We are one. We work together. We fight. When we talk about this community-based group, and we don't meet together, this doesn't happen. And I got to tell you all the truth. We go back and forth. Because everybody has an interest, and everybody contributes something significant. Each and every one of them are parts or co-chairs of the community groups that we put together to make sure that we have a development and it's answerable to the community. You know, when I first got elected to Congress, the first project that I had to deal with, I looked out at this light rail at JFK. And many people thought it couldn't happen. In fact, many people were against it. Many people thought it would not have ridership. And we look at it now as it connects all of our terminals. It makes it possible that we can do the kind of renovation and have the terminals hooked up together so that we can show that this city, city so great they had to name it twice, New York, New York, <laughs> leads. It is indeed the gateway. As I travel across the world, and I talk to people in other parts of the world, and I try to talk to them about where do they come when they come visit our country, oftentimes they say, I want to come through JFK. I used to come through JFK. Because when JFK was first created, it was the landmark airport that everybody wanted to come through in the world. And now I brag to them, I said, well, You've been trying to deviate someplace else, but how long, not long, before you can come again to the landmark airport of the world to welcome all of you at JFK Airport in New York, Queens, New York particularly. That's what this is all about. So as in the $9.5 billion investment, world-class international terminal, another int integral part of the ongoing transformation at JFK, this is what progress is all about. COVID-19 may have knocked us down, but it didn't knock us out. It's this city and this project is what shows the ability that as long as you could, it's okay to get knocked down, folks, but as long as you have the ability to stand up and to get back up and keep fighting, and keep moving your dreams, the opportunities to create a better today and better opportunities for us in this community. MWBEs, local workers are here creating 
wealth, making a difference, changing lives, will make it better for everyone. Everyone. A project that unifies us all starts right here today at JFK. Thank you, each and every one of you, for all of your contributions and for your being here, because this project is a landmark that will stand to represent us and our borough, our city, state, and indeed our nation. God bless you all. It is now my honor, privilege, and pleasure to introduce my partner who has a vision for Queens of building and bringing us all together and making sure that we're all included therein. Young guy with big ideas, the borough president of Queens County, Donovan Richards. Well, I want to start by thanking Reverend Meeks. But thank you, Congressman. It is it's truly an honor to be here this morning. What a magical day for the borough of Queens. Not every day you can start your day saying, Magic Johnson, I got sneakers in the Jeep. We're going to go out to the court right now. <laughs> but waking up early to go to the airport is normally a pain, but not when it's to break ground on a $9.5 billion investment in the future of this borough. Governor Hochul, thank you for your vision and commitment to this borough. You have not been, and I've said this at just about every press conference we've had together for the last month, feels like one a day, that you have not been a fair weather friend, that you have invested heavily, that you were here during the pandemic, you'll be here after the pandemic, you've been here during our toughest times when Ida hit this borough, and then on top of that, every time you come into Queens, you bring your big wallet. And we are so appreciative of your commitment to the borough, because there's rhetoric, but then there's investment. We got too much rhetoric going around in government. We need to see investment. So we're thankful for your partnership. Today is truly a historic day for this borough in the millions of people who fly in and out of JFK Airport. You know, Queens is truly the gateway to the world. And today we break ground on one of the biggest, the biggest economic development projects that Queens has ever seen. And that's partly because that's what we do in Queens. We lead. There is nothing that can knock us down. We get up. This pandemic might have hit us hard, but we often said coming out of this pandemic, that it wasn't simply about building back, but building back stronger and better. And that's what we're doing here today as we officially get the ball rolling on the creation of at least 10,000 jobs right here in Queens, including 6,000. And it's not good enough just to talk about any jobs. When we talk about union jobs, union jobs are about upward mobility. It's about ensuring that we don't just simply have jobs, but that we have careers in our county. As you look on the outskirts of this airport, as I digress from my notes, thank you, staff. You will see unemployment. You'll see the challenges that many of us see around the city when it comes to shootings and crime. But you can't criminalize your way out of poverty. You have to ensure that you're investing in people, and that starts with ensuring that they can have a job, and that's what we're going to do with this project. So today, as we break ground on a new Terminal 1, we begin the, begin the process of making JFK the greatest airport in the world. Sorry, Rick. We're not looking to be in the top 10. We're looking to be the greatest. We're looking to be number one. But we often know in Queens, we don't pick favorites sometimes. So don't worry, Rick Cotton. We love the new LaGuardia just as much. But speaking of Rick Cotton, I think we owe a, a debt of gratitude to Rick and his entire team. 
I didn't see Tanisha here. I want to thank Rachel. Uh, there they go. Super team. Woman from this community. Stand up. FUBU. FUBU. For us and by us. That's what I call them. You know, this project looked uncertain at one time, but it really took a partnership, a lot of teamwork, and because of that, we are going to see a lot of local hiring here. We are going to ensure that that 30% MWBE goal is not necessarily the ceiling, but the floor. And up at LaGuardia, $2 billion in contracts have been awarded to MWBEs. For Queens-based businesses, we're talking $775 million in contracts. That's what leveling the playing fields look like. And down here at JFK, we want to see that replicated and expanded. Because as you look on the outskirts of this airport, where the neighborhoods that I live, I live in Rosedale, the congressman lives in Hollis, we know all too well that we have to deal with the plane noise, the traffic, and construction. And this is one of the reasons these communities, these zip codes, must be prioritized through this process. Beyond Queens, the aviation industry supports tens of thousands of jobs. It's the linchpin of our city's economy, and our airports are the gateways to our entire region. So to Governor Hochul and to the Port Authority, thank you again for your commitment to Queens. This is truly a slam dunk. Thank you to the new Terminal One Consortium Group, which will operate Terminal One, and as my co-chair said, alluded to, the fact that we have black and Hispanic leaders in industries who are going to build this airport, this is a momentous day. In closing, to the workers who will build this terminal, we stand with you and thank you for all that you will do. To my co-chair, once again, Gregory Meeks, thank you. To Gerard, thank you. Thank you to everyone who kept this going, who took a leap of faith uh, coming out of this pandemic. With that being said, Queens, get the money. God bless you all. Thank you and God bless. And now it gives me great privilege to introduce the chairman of Ferrovio, Rafael Del Pino. So, good morning, everyone. So, Governor Hochul, you said in December in a speech in the Metropolitan Club that you encouraged foreign investors to come and invest in New York State. So it took us a few months to get the money. <laughs> and then to get an agreement with Carlisle. And here we are. So said and done. So we're very honored to be here today with uh, members of the New York community, speaking at the heart of one of the most iconic airports in the world. It was, in fact, the GFK that I landed first time I came to the U.S. some time ago. I was about 18 years old. So today marks a key milestone in the transformation of JFK. Since its opening in 1948, this airport has grown to become one of the busiest in the United States and an essential component of the world's air transportation system and also a key economic driver of the New York State, New York City, and the U.S in general. So with the new Terminal 1, we aim to create an environment that will meet the port authorities and the state's vision to make JFK one of America's favorite connecting hubs and the gateway of choice for millions of passengers. Upon completion, the new terminal will offer the highest levels of passenger experience through a state-of-the-art terminal building, creating a compelling proposition for airlines and for passengers. The new Terminal 1 gives proofs of uh, Ferrovia's commitment. We have our team there today. They get a great effort um, all these months, and uh, I'm sure um, for the coming years as well, Ignacio. 
and um, our capabilities will build upon the great work done by the Port Authority so far, also by the governors and the governor's office and the new Terminal 1 team before us and will help move the project forward. So with a strong commit commitment to ensure that the community benefits from this project, we will work together with local entities with a special emphasis on minority and women-owned businesses to create growth opportunities for them during the construction and operation of this project. I would like to especially thank Governor Hoku and Port Authority Executive Director Rick Cotton for their trust and for working effectively with us to make this vision a reality. So thank you very much. Now I'm introducing uh, someone who doesn't need any introduction and uh, who's been our partner in another project and hopefully for many other projects to come, Magic Johnson. All these short people up here now. <laughs> Borough President Richards, don't mess with me. I get up at four o'clock every morning, work out for two hours. I still got it. <laughs> Let me say, God is so good. Amen. And what a blessing it is to be here. I am disappointed that my great partner, Jim Reynolds, is not here, couldn't be here, but uh, he has been at the forefront of working uh, with Rick and the governor and her incredible team. Let's give it up for your governor. She is amazing. She is amazing. <laughs> to make sure that this project came to fruition, two of my partners are here, Eric Holloman, Please, Marlon Smith, please stand up. Uh, we are just truly excited to be a part of this project. You know, I invested in Harlem, uh, bought the Magic Johnson Theaters, built a few Starbucks. Then I went to Brooklyn and owned about five mixed-use buildings and uh, built Starbucks as well. Then we just wrote a big check for LaGuardia. We are a part of that new development that you see uh, at LaGuardia. But I've never been to Queens. And here I am. And I'm going to tell you something. When Congressman Meeks call you and say, Magic, Jim, get your company to Queens, and we want you to be a part of this incredible project. And that's why we're here. We're here because Rick's vision and him saying that, you know what, we're not going to let this die. And uh, Congressman Meeks saying, hey, we want to make sure a minority firm is involved and that they can not only write a check, but also have the expertise to make sure they invest in the Queens community. $700 million going to minority and women-owned firms. Come on, come on, we got to clap for that. So I'm not going to be long. I'm a man of action, very few words. I like to get things done. And I'm just happy to, that this project is being built that we're a part of it. We'll look forward to working with the borough president to make sure that we vet so many of these firms and make sure that who wants to have contract at this beautiful airport. If you qualify, you get those contracts. We'll work side by side with you and bless you. And that's how small businesses become middle-sized business, and that's how they become big business, when they can have contracts at a JFK airport. That's what it's all about. So. Thank you for letting me come into New York once again and invest, invest in the people here. And uh, before I get off the stage, Congressman, you got to stand up. We got to give him a hand because he's done a tremendous job. <laughs> Great working with you as always. <laughs> Borough President, you got to stand. I mean, I'm sorry, Borough President, stand on up, Richards. Yep. Rick, 
This is a part of your incredible legacy, my man. And uh, we're happy to work side by side with you. And uh, thank you. And Jim wants to say thank you, thank you, and thank you. So stand on up. Come on, Rick. Take a bow. Yeah. Come on, come on. Come on, give it up for him. And last but not least, we got to make sure this woman get in this office for good. Stand on up, Governor. Yes, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to, Gary, you the next man up. And um, when I pass it to you, bro, you got the skull. I'm, I'm known for the assist. So. This man here don't create jobs, he create careers. A lot of young people may go to college, but a lot of them won't go to college. But if they can have a trade, they can be, still be productive in life. And that's what this young man does for people, and not just people of color, but all people. And that's what he's all about. So please, let's give a great hand for Gary LaBarbera. <laughs> Thank you so much, Magic, for those kind words. Good morning. Uh, September 21st, 4.45 p.m., 633 3rd Avenue, 2021. I sat across the table from Governor Kathy Hochul. And in that meeting, the Governor of the State of New York said to me, what is the most important project that you want to see me move forward? What will create the most jobs? Because we're coming out of a pandemic and we need to do something bold. And I said to the governor of the great state of New York, JFK, New Terminal One. And she said to me, and this is the God's honest truth, she said to me, Gary, I will get that done. Less than one year later, we're at a groundbreaking. So, Governor, I want to thank you. This governor does what she says. She means what she says. And as Magic Johnson said, we got to make sure she is our next governor of the state of New York. I, too, would like to make some acknowledgments. First of all, I'd like to acknowledge all of my brothers and sisters from labor that are here, many members of the New York City Building and Construction Trades Council Executive Board and business reps from all of the unions that will be involved in building this project. I would also like to acknowledge a dear friend and a great American labor leader who's here with us today, and that is Terry O'Sullivan, the general president's of the Laborers International Union of North America. Terry, thank you for coming up from Washington and being with us. I would also like to acknowledge Ed Smith. I know he's been acknowledged, the president of ULICO and the entire team, Ed, for having this investment, 19% ownership in this project. Thank you for all you did. I've been given the distinct honor to be the voice of labor today at this event, and so I want to share a few of my thoughts, much of what has been said. You've heard all about the details and the job creation in this project, but I want to actually put it in context for you what that means when we say not a job but a career. And as you've heard from prior speakers, that a career is a path to the middle class. It's not a job. It's not you start a project and when that project is over, you're out of work. A union construction job is a career. It's a career that takes men and women from all of the communities in New York City, and puts them into an apprenticeship program, and they train from three to five and a half years at no cost to them. They are educated as they work. They are paid as they work and as they learn. And at the completion of that apprenticeship program, they are journeymen or journeywomen, which means they are of the highest skill 
in the construction industry. And it's this skill and knowledge and ability is what is required to build such a mega project as this. Now these careers take people from underserved communities and this is part of the project labor agreement and many discussions with Rick Cotton and with Gregory Meeks and Donovan Richard about one in the project labor agreement which covers the construction of this project the ability for MWBEs to participate in this project and to ensure that they will have, as you've heard, an opportunity to work and grow on this project. Along with that comes a local, local work, workforce and local hire. And what, that's a big one. And what we will do with the community is use our pre-apprentice and direct entry programs to give access to underserved communities, marginalized communities, to find a path, a career path, into the middle class and out of poverty. As Borough President Richard said, the social strife that we have and what we face today in our country and poverty can truly only be cured by a career path. Everyone from every community wants to have the dignity of work. They want to go to work, be productive, provide for their family, and at the end of their career, they want to have a dignified and respectful retirement. And that is what organized labor provides for their hard work. So <clears throat> that is the significance of this project. It is creating so much opportunity for so many. And I just want to say before I introduce the next speaker that Rick Cotton was a champion. I probably, Rick probably did not want to hear from me as much as he did during this process. <laughs> and I got the sense that his, when he saw my cell number, he probably cringed. <clears throat> but it has to be, under, it cannot be under, uh, underscored enough that he was a champion in getting this across the board. Now finally, I'd like to intro introduce another person, another champion of sorts that stuck with us for, year, for the four years, and it was many ups and downs, many starts and stops, a lot of high moments and a lot of low moments. But Gerard Bouchel, who is the CEO of New Terminal, one is someone that I've worked with in the past when he was with DASNY, Dormitory Authority of State of New York, and negotiated some very, very large multi-billion dollar project labor agreements with. And I have to say that aside from Dr. Bouchel's intellect and business acumen, I probably never met uh, a finer gentleman in, in, in my life. He is... Uh, uh, an honest broker. Uh, he has always, throughout the many difficult situations, maintained a high decorum uh, in business etiquette. And it has been a pleasure for me to work with him uh, throughout this process for this project. But it is also a very high honor for me to consider Gerard a personal friend. So with no further introduction, please welcome to the podium <clears throat> the CEO of New Terminal One, Dr. Gerard Duchel. You saw what happened there? That's what happened to the project. Got back up. Got back up. Got back up. Gary, thank you very much. Uh, and thank you all for coming together and celebrating a triumphant moment. That is so important. As, as everyone has told you, uh, this project was not inevitable. Uh, Borough President, you said this project looked uncertain. This project looked uncertain many times. That tells you how far we have come. 
in November of 2019, Magic, what did you do, man? Short people, you know? In November of 2019, the new Terminal One Consortium at the time of Carlisle, JLC, and Ulico were prepared to commence and commit capital to the design and construction of a multi-billion dollar world-class terminal at JFK. Just four months later, what we had intended to build, COVID almost stopped. Instead, today, we move forward. The new Terminal One development is a major vote of confidence from private capital in Southeast Queens, Queens, New York City, New York State, and our great metropolitan region, the largest in the nation. This is where it happens, folks. This multi-billion dollar development is evidence we are exiting some of the darkest days in each of our lives. We are here to build infrastructure and create jobs. Governor Hochul, thank you. Thank you for your leadership of New York State and prior prioritizing the growing importance of a strong connection between restoring economic growth and managing public health. Today, our consortium is both resilient and stronger. Nine months ago, Ferrovial, a global infrastructure company and operator of airports, completed our consortium and now operates as our lead investor. To our Terminal One sponsors, you continue to spend and support the project when every, every indicator told us to pause. Because of your vision and execution, we will deliver the following. Build an innovative, customer-friendly, sustainably focused, world-class terminal as the new doorway to this nation. Commitment to workforce development and creation of more than 10,000 jobs over the life of the project through a partnership between labor and the community. A vision and strong partnership with the Southeast Queens and Queens community from where we commence our first step towards delivering jobs in MWBE participation across 37 zip codes, delivering the largest privately financed P3 project in the nation, in the nation, with a compelling goal of 30% MWBE participation. This represents over $1 billion of value, and it will transform generations to come. So with these, I would like to thank the investors of this project. To Carlisle, our first lead sponsor, Pete Taylor and Richard Hoskins, you kept your hand on the steering wheel, sustaining the project during the darkest days. You kept the project front and center at Carlisle. We had the support of the board members and one of Carlisle's founders, David Rubenstein. He called all the time. To JLC Infrastructure Partners, Founders Jim Reynolds, but Jim and I go back a long way. Uh, great, great leader of a company. And Irving Johnson. Irving, I read Pat Riley's book. He says he doesn't call you magic. And the reason why he doesn't call you magic is because you are the hardest working person he has ever worked with. So he calls you Irving. That's what he said. Okay. Thank you, thank you for your commitment to sustain the project. You are pioneers, a major partner who is an MBE infrastructure firm investing 30% of equity in the nation's largest P3 project, in the nation's largest P3 project. <laughs> to Ulico, President and CEO, Ed Smith, when I called you, Ed, your conviction and support, always, 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 Ulico is good. We continue to see this project as a strong investment. You are an important bridge to our labor brothers and sisters, particularly, particularly 
the building trades right here, Gary LaBar. <laughs> to our partners in the building trades, President Gary LaBarbera, many, 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 many thanks for a path-breaking project labor agreement. You and I have done many of these, and they were the best in the nation. This is the best. $400 million of MWBE capacity inside this project labor agreement. Unheard of. California doesn't have that. New York has that. This is where it happens. <laughs> workforce development, job creation, workforce development from the community at numbers of 40%. That is incredible, incredible. The other thing, Gary and the Building Trades, thank you, thank you, thank you for Alternative Dispute Resolution, ADR, the first in New York City in more than 20 plus years. This is a major commitment to the safety of workers on our construction project. We continue to set the bar high. And to our current lead sponsor, Ferrovial, your leadership as a global developer of infrastructure and a global operator of airport terminals gives us great confidence that we can deliver a world-class terminal on budget, on schedule, and with great social impact. To Chairman Rafael De Pino, thank you. None of this, none of this happens without each of my sponsors. Your commitment of capital is a great vote of confidence in the city, state, and region. Our consortium is committed to driving greater diversity and inclusion across the project. You have heard that. The sponsors have also given me an opportunity as a diverse leader to lead the nation's largest P3 project. When I was growing up, it was not possible to see a pathway to this role. As a diverse leader who was black, we now live in a time where we are committing to diverse talent and building opportunities, opening the playing field to many more people. Governor Hochul, your commitment to diversity and inclusion continues to set a high bar for others to follow. As the first female governor of the Empire State, you are showing a pathway for women, young girls, and many others to set their sights on opportunities previously not available to them. Kudos to you. To, to Rick Cotton, we've worked together for close to eight years. I know the last three have been more challenging than the first five, and, 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 and thank you for all that you do and your leadership. To the board members of the Port Authority, uh, thank you for your support and your leadership, and to the great staff of the Port Authority. You, you've been in the trenches with us all the way. We really do appreciate that. We stand together with the Port Authority at the execution phase and are focused on delivering major infrastructure as well as jobs and community engagement. Let me quickly highlight a few achievements since our announcement in December 2021. We have an investment grade credit rating from three rating institutions. We signed the lease with the Port Authority. We completed financial close to draw down well over $5 billion of capital from a syndicate of banks at a time when the credit markets were dislocating. It's tough today, it's tough out here. That gives us five years of funding before we go back to the market. Five years of funding. We have a project right here. We have a great construction and design team. A.E. Tishman is our builder and Gensler is our designer. Jay Badami, all eyes are on you. 
You gotta deliver this. There you go. All right, Jay. You're here. We have commenced construction with the demolition of the green garage. And finally, before commencement of construction, we contracted with over 101 MWBE firms, many of whom are from <laughs> Southeast Queens, spending more than $64 million for delivering key engineering, planning, and design work. Partnership with the community is essential to our strategy, and it is essential to our mission. Thank you, Borough President Donovan Richards, elected officials from Queens, and members of the Community Advisory Board of the JFK Project. We appreciate all the work and the support that you have given us to give us a clear passage. A special mention, a special mention for Congressman Gregory Meeks. Congressman Meeks, I have been given, and I was given the great fortune to work with you at a time when H. Carl McCall was a New York State controller. He tasked me with the mandate to identify young leaders across New York State. And I said, here's one. And remember he used to say, Gregory? That's what he, he's the only person who gets away with that. <laughs> okay. um, I learned from that experience, you are a builder of bridges and you lead by example. You have helped navigate our consortium during the darkest days and you deliver for your district. Thanks for your collaboration you have had with the, two, the new Terminal 1 on diversity, inclusion, job creation, workforce development, and sustainability. As you shared with us before, this project will be one of the most impactful infrastructure projects we will experience for generations to come. Thank you. And Thank you to our new Terminal One team. This is a special time. I look forward to working with you, not 16 hours a day as we did for the last five years, um, but really thank you for your partnership, your commitment, and your patience during this very difficult time. Richard Smythe, I know when we brought you on, it looked like a cakewalk. Well, it wasn't. Thank you for your leadership and support. And a final thanks to our airline partners, Air France, KLM, Etihad, and LOT, and our master concessionaire, URW. Your commitment to excellence will help all of us attain a world-class status. Thank you, and thank you to each of you for being present and having the patience and conviction that this would happen as it has happened. Have a great day. It's time now to break some ground on the new Terminal 1. We'd ask that all those in attendance please remain inside of the tent and behind the press riser while we're taking the groundbreaking photo. Please remain inside of the tent, please. Thank you.